Hello, and welcome to the free day of yoga. Uh, this evening's class, we'll be doing a workshop on Trataka, and uh, Trataka is sometimes called a candle gazing meditation, but we'll take a closer look at several varieties, uh, and some of them not quite as well known. Uh, that are all kind of uh, under that same category. So the first thing to understand is that there is a very strong connection between the eyes and the state of consciousness. Uh, so much so that different thoughts create specific eye movements. Uh, for instance, accessing memory, uh, the eyes typically will go up and slightly to one side as we are trying to remember something and then drop back down to normal. So that's an example of an eye movement that is connected to a specific thought. So the yogis noticed this thousands of years ago that certain emotions, certain thoughts, certain personalities uh, created specific types of eye movements. Uh, ADD, for instance, has a, uh, a characteristic way of moving their eyes. And they asked the question, if a thought or if a emotion can create eye movements, can we turn that around by controlling eye movements, can we begin to exercise control over consciousness? And so that was the birth of a variety of different meditations, including Trataka. Okay. Uh, there are three stages to Trataka. Uh, stage one is an external focus. And within that, we'll take a look at two or three different uh, exercises, finishing with the candle gazing variation, but we'll also do uh, or talk about how to work with a mirror uh, or how to work with an optical illusion, there's several optical illusions that work well, or mandal. Stage two, we focus on the memory of an image. So for instance, you might stare at a black dot for 30 seconds and then close your eyes and then focus with one pointed attention on the image of the black dot in your mind. Okay, so that would be an example of an internal uh, Trataka practice. Uh, stage three uh, is uh, gazing into uh, emptiness and there are a variety of different ways of practicing this. One is with your eyes closed to gaze into the void. Uh, another is with your eyes open to focus on space. So for instance, if you watch what my eyes do, if I look at my thumb, and I stare at my thumb, you'll notice my eyes cross slightly to bring my thumb into focus. And then you learn how to gaze on the point that your thumb was occupying and let everything else kind of whitewash out. So now I'm focusing on nothing as opposed to focusing on something. Uh, the other one is uh, to gaze at the sky. <clears throat> this works better when there's no features in the sky. For instance, a blue sky works really well, or a overcast that is kind of uh, non-specific, uh, no details to it, that can work very well, and then we gaze uh, into space. Uh, you could also do that sometimes with water with the right conditions, just gazing at water, and then losing yourself in the space of the meditation. And then the final one is uh, called a seer meditation, and that's probably the most advanced. And there, you close your eyes, and then you turn around, metaphorically, you turn around inside your head, and then you gaze at the void from which the gazer gazes. Uh, so those are the different types we're going to cover. We'll take a few moments first to talk about uh, some contraindications, uh, some different things we can do to try and make this work a little bit better. And then I'll be showing you some images on uh, the screen. And we'll work with those to begin with. And then at the end, uh, we'll do a candle gazing. This works better with a real candle. So if you have a candle handy and matches, uh, when we get ready to do the candle gazing, uh, just set your screen to one side and I'll talk you through it uh, with your own candle. For those of you who don't have access to a candle, uh, I'll have a, a video of a candle that you can work with that. So let's get started. So before we begin, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some precautions, contraindications, and considerations. Uh, so first, uh, you shouldn't be practicing Trataka 
uh, with a candle flame if you have cataracts, glaucoma, myopia, astigmatism, or epilepsy. Uh, if you have any of those conditions and want to practice, you'll need to consult uh, an expert that can guide you through that. Uh, if you uh, practice the external tradaka, which we'll go over, but the candle gazing primarily, uh, don't practice for more than 10 minutes at a time. And there is a very slight problem that if you practice this extensively over months and months and months, the constant gazing at the candle flame can damage uh, the sensitivity of the rods and receptors in the eye. Uh, so. 10 minutes a day, and I wouldn't do it every day for months and months. I'd take a break once in a while. When you're practicing, relaxing the eyes as much as possible so you don't harden the eyes. Um, otherwise, they'll blur and they tend to flicker to move more frequently. Uh, the target of your observation should be at eye level and about anywhere from an arm's length to up to five feet away. I usually have it a little closer, maybe one and a half arm's lengths away. If you are practicing, you want to be able to see the objects clearly. So if uh, you can't do that without glasses, uh, then uh, I would suggest using glasses. I don't recommend contacts, though. Uh, if you're using a candle, Make sure the room is uh, dark as possible, and also make sure there's no breeze. So if you have an air conditioner with a fan blowing, you might turn that off while you're practicing for 10 minutes. When you're gazing, gaze with purpose as if you were looking for something, but without thinking about it. And then finally, don't strain the eyes. Uh, and ideally, the eyes are kept open and steady without moving. Uh, but if you need to blink, don't fight it. If you do need to blink, allow your eyes to blink. But when you do that, try not to move the eyes as you blink. So there are many different external ways to practice. Uh, the mandal is a classic uh, exercise, and there's thousands of those. If you Google mandal, you'll find a variety. And there we focus on the mandal. Uh, in some traditions, every Part of the mandal has symbolism that you can read into, uh, but you can also do it just as a purely visual exercise. Uh, optical illusions can be very nice for working for. Uh, here, for instance, uh, we allow the cube to appear, and then we either try to turn the cube in or out by focusing on a different corner and holding steady, and then trying to learn how to control doing that at will. Uh, what we're going to focus on, though on is the benefits of bringing the eyes to perfect stillness. Typically your eyes uh, have very tiny fast twitch muscles that are constantly keeping the pupil moving. So the eye doesn't actually stay steady, it's jumping around even though you don't realize it or don't know it, it's still happening. So what they found is when you can bring the eyes to absolute stillness that the mind begins to quiet and that is uh, at the heart of the practice we'll be using of Trataka. So here are some optical illusions that can help with that practice. <clears throat> if uh, you want to work with any of these illusions a little bit longer, uh, just pause the video and then when you're ready you can resume again. So one of the simplest is called a smudge illusion. Take a look at the uh, image on the right, the circle on the right. And you'll notice there's a black dot in the middle and then it smudges out, fades out away from that. If you stare at the central black dot without letting the eyes move, eventually you'll notice that the smudge disappears and it's a black dot on a white background. As soon as you move the eyes, you'll notice the smudge reappears. Now the one on the left is harder because there's some distraction. So this teaches you how to focus even with distraction. Your eyes are going to want to jump over to the dotted line and back to the center. And when that happens, a smudge reappears. See if you can hold on to the central dot and dissolve or disappear the smudge, even though it's a little more challenging here. Now with modern psychology, we have lots of new images that uh, are fun to work with. And again, to learning how to bring your eyes to absolute stillness. So first, take a moment to look at this image and let your eye move around the screen and you'll notice 
that the wheels start turning. Now actually, this is a picture, it's not video. There's nothing actually moving. If you don't believe me, pause the video for 10 seconds, move your eyes around, look at different points on the picture, and then start it up again. Okay. Now, see if you can bring it to absolute stillness. And the way you do that is by stopping those tiny micro movements of the eyes. Hold your eye with fixed one-pointed attention and bring the entire image to perfect stillness. Here's one that may be a little more challenging, but it's also really good for revealing the moment your eyes move. Now, if you look at these images, when you see the image move, it's because your eye moved. The longer you can keep the image steady, the longer you've kept your eyes steady. Again, feel free to pause here as long as you want, but we're going to move on and cover a couple more different possible exercises and then we'll practice the candle gazing together for about 10 minutes. Now, here we have a blue dot and what I'd like for you to do is to stare at the blue dot. Earlier I mentioned that there is the external and internal, so we're going to practice an internal trataka. So first, stare at the dot for about 10 more seconds. Stare at it intently with the same intention that you were staring at the previous images Then you tried to get them to stop moving. In a moment, you're going to close your eyes and then you're going to stare at the image of the dot in your mind's eye with the same focus. Ready? And close your eyes. Now, focus on the image of the blue dot with your eyes closed the same way you did with the eyes open in the previous images. So that is a internal trataka, and there's a variety of different types. Uh, now we're going to focus on an external trataka, but one that involves a skill that uh, you may or may not pick up uh, immediately. So if you struggle with this one, it may require a few days or weeks of practicing to get good at it. Some of you may take to it naturally though. So we're going to hold up our thumb in front of the blue dot and stare, not at the blue dot, but at the thumb. And then you'll move your thumb back and forth a little bit as you're doing this until you make sure you're looking at the thumb. And when you are, you'll see two blue dots in the background not one. So give that a try. See if you can see two blue dots. The biggest mistake people make is they focus on the blue dot. Make sure you're looking at your thumb. Okay. Now once you can do that, we do the same thing with two dots, a blue and a red. So watch for just a moment. You focus on your thumb, then you move your thumb forward and backward. So once you focus on the thumb, you'll see four dots. Then as you move your thumb forwards and backwards, you'll see the dots move towards each other and move away. And I want you to hold at the point where you have three dots. Then give your attention to the dot in the middle because it is a composite. The left eye is seeing a blue dot, the right eye is seeing a red dot occupying the same space, and over time, it'll start to change colors. So with practice here, we focus on the thumb, we take the thumb away, and we focus on where the thumb was. Okay. Here we're using an image, but you can also do this without any image. That's when we talked about the space traticus with the space gazing where you look at nothing. Now we can make things more interesting. If you do the same thing with this image, uh, you will get a third circle in the middle that will be a vertical stripe and a horizontal stripe inside a circle. And then you begin to see if you can make it a horizontal stripe, a vertical stripe, a cross, or a circle without anything in it. And you begin to play with melding the left and the right eye to create a composite image. You begin to play with controlling how the brain assembles that image. Once you get where you can do that fairly easily, then you can do it with all kinds of images. 
uh, give it a try here. Hold your thumb, move it forward or backward until you see four faces, and then adjust till you see three. Focus on the middle face. And your brain will try and make sense of the left eye and right eye seeing two different faces, and it will create a composite image. And then that composite image will change over time. You'll notice that it comes and goes. So that leads us up to our uh, last um, detour before we start our uh, classic Trataka uh, workshop. So here we gaze into a mirror. Now classically you looked into your reflection in the mirror. I don't actually like that because it confuses the brain because the left eye and the right eye are connected to the right and left hemispheres of the brain and we process image based on that. When we look at someone's eyes, we know by the left eye what the right hemisphere is doing, by the right eye what the left hemisphere is doing, and by that we can kind of get a sense of what's going on inside their heads. The problem is when we look in a mirror, that image is reflected. It's transposed. So now the brain's getting the exact wrong information. You're thinking that the left hemisphere is in one state and the right is in the other, but it's actually the opposite that's happening. So a true mirror uh, helps to reverse that, which I love a true mirror, and it takes that image and flips it back again so you see yourself the way other people see you. Uh, however, they're expensive and hard to get. So there's another way of working with a mirror that I love, and that is the same thing we've been practicing with the dots and the thumb. So if you remember how you took two faces, made three faces, and then overlapped them, you're going to do the same with your face, only now you're going to create four eyes, then you can move your thumb forward and backward until you get three eyes. Now the middle eye is going to be a composite of the left and the right eye merged. And then you focus on that middle third eye as your meditation. With all of these exercises, I recommend about 10 minutes. And then when you're finished, splash some cold water on your eyes and then do eye palming. Rub your hands, cup your hands, stare into the darkness of your palms. So now we're going to set up for our candle meditation. It'll take me just a moment uh, to get set up for that. Uh, so if you're using your own candle, take a moment, turn off the lights, um, get your candle lit, make sure you're comfortable about eye level. Those of you that don't have a candle, uh, I'll be videoing it and you can use the video of the candle flame and we'll start here in just a moment. So finding a comfortable seated position and then when you're ready light your candle in this variation we're going to approach the candle flame slowly so first, focus your eyes on the candle holder, the bottom of the candle holder. And take about 15 or 20 seconds to slowly take your eyes around in a circle tracing the bottom edge of the candle holder. And if you remember the intention you used when you were trying to stop the moving images to bring them to stillness by stopping the micro movements of the eyes. Use that same intensity. Take two or three breaths. When you finish that circle, come to the top of the candle itself, not the flame, and circle around the top edge of the candle just as slowly.
now focus at the root of the flame. And then focus on the heart of the flame.
now coming back to your meditation. Uh, blink your eyes and then when you're finished I recommend doing a uh, splashing cold water in your eyes and remember about 8 to 10 minutes is a good amount of time uh, for Trataka but you don't want to overdo it. I'd like to thank you for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful weekend weekend. Namaste.